offered a number one hit every year of the 1990s. And she sold over 100 million records. You're about to hear the ultimate Cinderella story. From sleeping on a mattress in a shared apartment to a butterfly-covered $9 million penthouse. The butterflies on the walls, on the windows, on the bed. So maybe she's a bit of a diva, wouldn't you be? She has a chaise lounge sofa in the middle of her kitchen. Okay, a lot of a diva. Welcome to a life with perks you didn't even know existed. Like owning 500 pairs of high heels. It has to be open toe and four inches. Membership at exclusive nightclubs in Aspen, Colorado. But the care of the club every night is New Year's Eve. I like to have as much fun as I can. I can only imagine. Not anymore, because we're about to show you why it's good to be Mariah Carey. Yo. It's all about that. Born Friday, March 27, 1970, Mariah Carey, sexy diva, automatic princess, and singing sensation. She came into the world singing with her eight-octave voice, you know, her most prized possession. Well, according to author Mark Shapiro, it was a genetic gift from her mom, Patricia. Patricia Carey was a singer, had made it to the upper levels of the New York opera scene. Mariah's mom and dad divorced when she was three, around the same time she started to find her voice. Ah, a child prodigy. Yeah, when she was singing. But Mariah wasn't exactly a bookworm in school. She attended Harborfield High where they called her Mirage. Mirage? I don't get it. Well, she had a little problem with showing up to class, thus the nickname. Aha! Well, in 1987, she pulled off the ultimate disappearance act. Within 24 hours after Mariah graduated from high school, she was gone. She had packed her bags, and she was off to the big city. But Mariah's life in New York didn't exactly start out in limos and five-star hotels, recalls former roommate Josephine Dean. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and we slept on the mattresses on the floor, and we didn't really have any furniture. That's okay, because Mariah didn't really have time to sit or sleep. Because every spare minute of her time was spent writing songs and trying to make a good demo tape. I would waitress until two or three in the morning and I would work to like seven or eight in the morning in the studio. While hustling as a waitress and coat check girl, poor Mariah was only bringing in around 7000 a year. But she had her eye on a bigger prize. After a successful audition, author Fred Goodman says she landed her first official job in the music biz. Mariah's first exposure to working professionally that anybody hears about is when she was working for a singer named Brenda K. Starr. That's basically where she gets her entree to her own career. So she's on her way, but singing backup only gets you around $55,000 a year. And that's if you're performing every single night. Chris Breed was a nightclub manager in New York and recalls Mariah's early years as a performer. I'd throw parties in New York and put singers on the stage. And I met Mariah and she dropped one of her tapes to me and I listened to her and I said, oh, this girl is going to be a big star for sure. And I never had any doubt. Apparently, she was dropping those demo tapes off to lots of people. Like one night in 1988, she happened to give one to just the right person. She and Brenda K. Starr were at a record company party and she passed the demo tape to Tommy Mottola, who was then the chairman of Sony Music, and supposedly played the tape in his car after leaving the party and he came back and got her. So Tommy signs her to Sony's Columbia record label in 1990 for $350,000. That's some decent coin for a 20-year-old. That's nothing. That same year, Mariah released her first album, and the rest, as they say, is history. She goes from being a backup singer and a waitress to being a superstar in a matter of months. I mean, her first album did extremely well. How well is extremely well? So the real money you see in a case like Mariah... I'd say it's safe to say around two dollars a CD. Plus, don't forget, Mariah writes her own songs. If you start adding in the songwriting royalties, that might be another fifty cents a CD by the time it's all done. So her debut album sold twelve million copies, which came to around thirty million dollars for Mariah's pocket, bringing her grand total for 1990 to thirty million three hundred fifty thousand dollars. She literally became this global superstar almost overnight. And it was just beginning, because in the 90s, Mariah started cranking out hit records like Hotcakes. The heights that Mariah had early in her career are extraordinary heights. Almost no one reaches them. In 1991, her second album titled Emotions brings home the bacon to the tune of about $10 million for Mariah. Hey, that's a little less than her debut, but I'll take it. Plus, in 92, her third CD called MTV Unplugged ups the ante with another $12.5 million or so. So, 
But that's nothing because in 1993, her album Music Box sells 24 million copies worldwide, snagging Ms. Carey an estimated 60 million bucks. And that same year, Ms. Carey became Mrs. Matola. Wearing a $25,000 Vera Wang gown in a ceremony truly befitting the princess of pop. Wow, what a year for Mariah. Then in 1994, Santa brought her around 20 million for her album Merry Christmas. And in 1995, her album Daydream sold 19 million copies and cha-ching, another 47.5 million bucks. But in 1997, there was some bad news and some good news. Mariah and Tommy were kaput, but her album Butterfly was yet another hit, banking around $12.5 million. Keeping a steady stream of hits was a very important strategy for her career. And I think that was the reason why there was essentially always something from Mariah. After blazing through 1998 with 12.5 million from her number one's album and 1999 with another 7.5 million from Rainbow, Mariah enters the new millennium signing an unprecedented $100 million contract. Virgin Records gave Mariah a contract that was reportedly worth $21 million per album. You're betting on a massive worldwide hit every time. Bad bet, because that's not how it went down. Yeah, in 2001, Mariah released Glitter, and even though it was her first flop, she still took home around $14.5 million from the movie and soundtrack. But... Buh-bye! 100 million. Glitter was the first of what was meant to be a five-record deal. But because Glitter performed so abysmally, they immediately bought her out of the contract, supposedly for $30 million. I say take the money and run, Mariah. I mean, look, I've been asked to go away many times, but no one's ever offered me $30 million to do it. And that's not all, folks. I mean, we're talking Mariah Carey. That's right. She was snatched up and signed straight away to another label in 2002. The Island Def Jam deal that came after Mariah split up with Virgin was reported as being worth $21 million for three albums. Not bad. Not bad? Come on! Now, I don't want to hear anyone crying over getting $7 million an album. And the first was Charm Bracelet in 2002. Which made her an estimated $2.5 million in addition to her $7 million advance. So, her total take-home in 2002 between the Virgin payout and Charm Bracelet was around $39.5 million. Nice. I can't wait to see how she does with the next two albums on her contract. Coming up, Mariah's $600,000 hand-me-down from Marilyn Monroe. And later, why is Mariah paying $1,900 just to sit next to Penny Marshall? Mariah Carey sang her way from the suburbs to the city, picking up a few bazillion bucks on the way. After having a number one hit every year of the 1990s and becoming the number one selling female performer of all time, Mariah's living large. So in 1999, the hip-hop princess needed a palace to hang her tiara. Well, she found one in the Tony Tribeca neighborhood of New York City, 15 stories up in a three-story penthouse. Mario Buata is the interior decorator that turned the $9 million apartment into a home for Mariah. So dreamy, it was featured in Architectural Digest. When I first saw the space, it was a loft space. It was a, an old commercial building. And this downtown apartment was definitely decorated for an uptown price. Decorating an apartment of that size cost two to three million dollars. It does have a huge room for clothing. I would think you're at Bergdorf Goodman. You'd think the shoe salon. You'd think you're at Manalo Blahnik. Ah, okay. I've heard about this place, except usually it's called heaven. What other Mariah motifs are there? Mariah has nocturnal fish in her media room because she's a night owl and wants the fish to be awake when she is. Hmm. You know, it's the little things in life. What else is in the magnificent dance? A piano that was auctioned off that belonged to Marilyn Monroe. It was a white lacquer baby grand piano, and she absolutely loved it. it went in the 600,000 area. Wow, I can just imagine Mariah tickling the ivories late at night while she hangs out with her fish. She doesn't play it, she doesn't allow people to play it. So she paid over 600 grand and she doesn't play it? Well, Mariah doesn't have time. She's too busy making moolah and spending time with her three best friends, her trio of Jack Russell Terriers. It's good to be Aspen, Jack, and Guam, according to dog breeder Ursula Schwalbe. I'm sure they're jet-setting around the world. These little dogs bring such joy into your life that you find yourself spoiling them just like you would spoil your children. Like buying them their own doggy couch, perhaps? This chintz chaise from Beastly Furnishings set Mariah back 375 bucks. 375 bucks for a dog's bed? That's outrageous! Not according to Ursula. Mariah is probably spending easily $30,000 a year supporting three Jack Russells in, in a celebrity lifestyle. Celebrity lifestyle? Oh, come on, they're dogs. They're family. 30 grand is nothing for your children. Probably not, and it's just a small expenditure for Mariah.
Her personal stylist, Blair Levin, costs close to 2500 bucks a day to make sure Mariah always looks amazing regardless of how much or how little she's wearing. I can bring it all to her. She can have her own little store in her closet versus having to go around. But what she really loves are high heels and the higher the better. I've learned, you know, if it's like less than four inches, I don't even buy it. Because I know she'd be like, I don't want that. Mariah's about 5'8", and then with a four inch heel, She's, you know, almost six feet. Just how many pairs of heels does Miss Carrie have? If I said 500, is that a lot? I, I have no idea how many are in there. Probably four or 500. 500? Now let's see. At $500 a pair, that's Carrier 2, that's $250,000 in shoes. Imelda Marcos, eat your heart out. Why does she need 500 pairs? She only has two feet. Well, you can be sure that the one place Mariah trades her heels for sneakers is Camp Mariah, the charity she started. Jenny Morgenthau is the executive director. Mariah was interested in building a camp for children and the Fresh Air Fund was trying to find somebody to be our angel. She gave us a million dollars. She has been extremely generous, sometimes giving us $50,000 a year for our benefit. Hey, anything for the kids. The first time she came, she took off her shoes and raced across the field with the kids. I should say she's very athletic. Mariah, running. Shh. You don't want to blow her diva reputation. She'll never leave a child out and sign every autograph for every child. Wow. A diva with a heart of gold.